I also have a Twitch channel. Head on over there for more roleplay advice and other fun stuff. There are certain things that we see over and over in fiction when it comes to character death that only happen in fiction. They don't happen in real life. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about character death. So, you've done it. You've decided that you're going to take the ultimate roleplay plunge, and you're going to kill off one of your characters. Now, before you do, I have five tips that I'd like to share with you about how and why you might want to kill off your character. First, ask yourself why. There are lots of reasons to kill off your character, so you need to make sure that you know within yourself why you're doing it. And this is going to help with the next tips that we're going to go over, so we have to do this first. Here's some reasons that either I've killed off a character or seen them killed off from a roleplay perspective. You've been playing the character for a long time and just can't anymore. Maybe you need to quit the roleplay for real life reasons. Or maybe an important other player for your character's relationships left the roleplay, like your shipping partner or your character's sibling or something like that, and after that experience you've just lost motivation for your character. Valid. Or maybe just overall you're not motivated for this character anymore because you're more interested in other characters and other plots. Now, I want to be clear, I'm not talking about characters you've been playing for a few weeks. I'm talking about characters you've been playing for several months or more. They've done a lot in the roleplay, they've built up lots of connections and relationships, and you can't just drop them and pretend like they weren't there because there's just too much that they affected at this point. You have to actually write them out somehow. And character death is one way to do that. You're running the roleplay, and the player for that character left. Say you're an admin for that roleplay, and a player left and it appears like they're not coming back. Sometimes it's in the roleplay's best interest for you to make the executive decision to kill off that character. Only do this if you really think that player is not coming back. If there's a chance that they may come back, then it might be better to write them off with something a little less permanent than death. And here's some non-death reasons that I've used before when we were unsure if the player was coming back or not. That character moved away from town suddenly. That character got arrested and can't post bail. Or that character joined some organization that was part of the roleplay and that caused them to cut ties with all of their friends and family. This is all setting dependent, of course. This is the ending you've been building to from the start. For some characters, their arc ends with death. If this is something you've been planning from the start and you're building to it and it's time to execute on that, go for it. Whatever your reason, Make sure you know why. If you want your character death to be impactful, you have to give it meaning for the story and for the other characters. Alright, so then, with that in mind, let's be real about a few things. No one really cares when an acquaintance dies. Yeah, you're probably sad hearing about any death, but does it really affect your day to day when someone you hardly know passes away? And the reason why I point this out is because if you kill off a character that was merely an acquaintance with everyone else in the roleplay, the other players aren't really going to react. They're not going to care. Also, if a character's really old, the truth is a lot of people don't think it's that sad when old people die. It might even be seen as a mercy depending on how that character's health is at the time of their death. So if you want to execute this and you want it to be impactful, you need even stronger connections when it comes to elderly characters. Also, some types of character death are done over and over and over in stories, and we've seen them so much that they become cliché. And what that means is they might not elicit as strong of a reaction in the players. Some examples. The character's dog or pet dies. The character's teacher, right when they're on the cusp of not needing them anymore, dies. Or dead parents in a backstory. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do these things. Just understand that if you do, you might not get a very strong reaction from the other players or from the other characters. Character death is often used as a motivational force for other characters. This is done over and over in storytelling because it works. If killing your character off will cause a chain of events within the narrative, that's great. The only thing to keep in mind is which characters this happens to. 
it's more typical for women's gays and people of color to be the characters that are killed off to motivate the white male lead. Now, this is because in our stories, we have a lot more of that white cishet male protagonist. So the side characters, love interests, friends, characters like that tend to be the ones that get killed off. So pay attention to this in your own writing. And the reason why I say this is just like I said with some of the other stuff, it's not that you can't do it. Just know that you might not get the reaction you're looking for when it comes to these types of character deaths. So just keep in mind, the death of this type of character to motivate the death of this type of character might frustrate some of the people that you're role-playing with. There are certain things that we see over and over in fiction when it comes to character death that only happen in fiction. They don't happen in real life. So if realism is important to you, keep that kind of thing in mind. I'll give you some examples. Being cut by a wire that you ran into. Any wire thin enough to be used as a razor would also be thin enough where it would snap as soon as you ran into it, so at most you'd maybe mess up your clothes, maybe a shallow cut, something like that, but you wouldn't be cut in half. Being strangled to death. Now, this one can happen, but it's not like in the movies. It takes a lot longer and it's a lot harder to do. Gasoline being lit on fire by a cigarette. Think about it, if this was really possible, it would be in the news over and over and over that someone caused a fire by smoking a cigarette while they were pumping their gas. People smoke while pumping their gas all the time, even though there's all those warnings and you don't hear about it. That's because this doesn't really happen. The liquid of the gasoline tends to put the cigarette out before it could be caught on fire. And those are just some examples that I happen to know that I felt like listing. There are so many more things like this. So when it comes to character death, if you care about realism, my recommendation is Google it first. Yeah, it's going to make your Google history look a little weird, but we're writers. That's normal for us. All right, so those were some tips for actually writing the character death. Let's circle back to the role play aspect for a minute. Communicate! Don't surprise your shipping partner, the person playing your character's parent or sibling, or the person playing your character's best friend with a character death unless you know that person super well and they're going to be totally okay with that kind of surprise. Now, I'm not saying you have to tell everyone who ever talked to your character that you're planning a character death. But if your character plays an important role in some other character's story, you need to tell the player of that character. Make sure they know it's coming and seek their consent. Now, I'm not saying the other person gets to control if you kill your character off or not. At the end of the day, it's your character. You get to decide. But also understand that they may hate that idea and it really turns them off from role playing with you. So with those risks in mind, it's important to have that conversation and try to seek consent during it. So in conclusion, there are five things to consider when writing your character death. Know why from an RP perspective. Give the death meaning and impact. Make sure the death incites a change in the plot or other characters. Employ enough realism and predictability that the death doesn't feel cheap. And communicate with your partners. All right, that's it. That's the character death video. That's my thoughts and tips on character death. So did I cover things that you tend to do? Did I leave something out? Let me know all of that down below. And as always, don't forget to make it a great day.